Go get him, Tiger. Hi, I'm Steve Alford. Not many of us are born with natural basketball talent, but if you practice my All-American workout faithfully, as I do, you can build the strength, stamina, and self-confidence it takes to play championship ball. Here's the coach that helped me develop the All-American workout, my father. Hello, I'm Sam Alford, and I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about the Steve Alford All-American workout. Before we get into the actual workout, there are a few ingredients that we need to talk about. We must have some dedication, we must have some discipline, and we must work with a great degree of intensity. If we do this, will we become an All-American basketball player or will we earn an Olympic gold medal? We can't guarantee that, but what we can guarantee is if you will develop a workout similar to what we're going to show you, you can become a better basketball player. Finding an excuse for it is going to be very difficult because you can do it in your backyard at your home goal, you can do it at the city park, you can do it in your open gymnasium that your coach may have for you, you can be male, you can be female, you can be the has-been that maybe we think's over the hill but yet you still like to play in the industrial leagues or the YMCA leagues. All of these can appeal to the All-American workout. Where do we come up with a workout? At the end of Steve's freshman year in high school, he averaged one point a game. We're in a very competitive league in the conference we're in, we sat down, we said, we've got to do something. We cannot continue the way we're going if you want to be a good basketball player. So we tried to do something that would make us a little different or try to develop Steve's ability to its fullest potential. Before we say whether you're an elementary player, a junior high player, a high school player, or a college player, one thing that you must do, you must make this statement that I want to dedicate, whether it be 20 minutes a day, whether it be 30 minutes a day, if I'm a high school player, maybe 45 minutes a day, or a college player, an hour a day. I want to dedicate this time to my coach to work hard to make myself a better player. There's an old saying that goes right with our All-American workout, and that is, you get out of something what you put into it. The importance of catching the ball and shooting quickly keeps the defense off balance. We tell players that before they ever start their workout, the one thing that you should be very careful of and always do, and that is to stretch good and to make certain that they're loose before they start any type of a workout procedure. Now, to us, these are the things that we felt were important to Steve and to our program. Steve is a guard. If you be a forward or a center, all you have to do is adapt our workout to your position. We think that the most important thing that a player has to do to play the game is to be able to shoot the ball without dribbling. Now you'll notice as Steve moves the intensity level with which he works, in two minutes he can get in about 20 to 25 good jump shots related to his game. He doesn't take hook shots, he doesn't take silly shots, he's working on the shots that he gets in the actual game situation. So he'll go for about two minutes to three minutes, very hard with the same level, never walking. Once he starts his workout, it's a workout, not playing the game of basketball. We will cut down the time slightly in order that we can show you everything in the tape. But Steve will go for his two minutes. Now's the important thing. What do you do? You will go to the refrigerator, You'll get your drink of water to rest. You'll go sit under the shade tree. 
You'll turn on the television. Well, the air conditioning's on in the house. All of these things are nice to rest. The way we like to rest in our workout is at the free throw line. Why the free throw line? You shoot free throws in a game when you're tired. This is the ideal time to go to the foul line to practice your free throws. We like to shoot sets of 10. Why 10? 10 free throws will take you about two minutes. Now, Steve's younger brother is rebounding for him now, again for time's sake, but when he's by himself, it takes approximately two minutes to shoot 10 free throws and get your own rebound. After two minutes, you will find that your breathing is pretty well back to normal, your legs are pretty well back to normal, and you've had a chance to get 10 free throws in an actual game situation. The other point to make with 10 free throws is they're very easy to keep track of. Okay, Steve has shot his 10 free throws. This drill enables me to keep the defense further off balance. Now they have to think about me catching the ball and shooting quickly, as well as catching the ball and driving by them. We try to stress to our players, and we'll try to show this with Steve now. You can cover three to four feet for every time that you put the ball on the floor. So what we want Steve doing, we tell him, go somewhere. Don't just bounce the ball on the floor. You'll notice he'll go right one time, he'll go left the next time. One dribble or two dribbles, that's all we want him taking. We don't want the ball going bounce, 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 bounce. That doesn't happen in the game. So we want him going now, working on one dribble or two dribbles. But again, you will notice that old word that we like to use, the intensity level at which he works. So he'll go his two minutes now off the dribble. He'll pick up another 20 to 25 good jump shots, working on his game situation, where he gets the shot at in his game. All right, he gets in his two minutes. Again, what do we do? His legs are getting heavy. He's getting out of breath. Where does he go to rest? Back to the free throw line for his second set of 10 free throws. One thing to remember is that you must chart them. Don't shoot free throws. You're just like a golfer who wants to know what his handicap is. Don't shoot free throws for the sake of shooting free throws. When Steve is done with his workout, he wants to know, I've shot 100 free throws, I hit 96. I've shot 90 free throws, I've hit 88. Don't shoot them just to shoot. Make it a very important part of your game. Set goals. This week I shot 62. Next week I'm shooting for 64. Next week, 66. Set goals for yourself and work toward them. Steve is 22 years old, but I could still take you in his room last summer when he was home, and he would have charts on the wall saying Monday, how many he shot, how many he hit. At the end of the week, he would have them charted, how many he hit, what percentage it was, because it meant something to him. It's just like a batting average. It's something that he strives to do a good job at, and you have to concentrate when you're doing this. You constantly hear coaches tell you, you must be able to use the glass. You become a better user by practicing the backboard. Again, Steve will stay in his shooting range. That's very important. But think about it. When was the last time you went out in the backyard or you went in the gym and you did something like this? See, again, and I will go back to this word many, many times this morning, intensity. So we'll spend our next two minutes doing this. You do this every day you're going to become a better backboard shooter. There's no way that you can help but improve your game. So Steve will spend the two minutes here. He'll get in another 20 to 25 good jump shots off the backboard. And again, when he gets tired, his legs will start to go. He'll start getting short of breath. He knows then that it's time that he takes his breather. And again, no water, no refrigerator, no air conditioning but back to the free throw line to get your rest and shoot his third set of 10 free throws. So now we're up very quickly. We can add that we now have put together three segments of four minutes each. So we have now spent 12 minutes out on the court. And I can remember Steve, I can remember his mother calling him saying, Steve, you have a telephone call. Steve, dinner's ready. His answer was always the same. I'll be in when I'm through with my workout. We try to encourage our players, do not sit down from the time you start your workout till you're finished. 
Again, going back to the words discipline, dedication, and intensity. We tell them when it's time to sit down, it's time to quit. So we try to design these that we can get our players to go with the idea that I'm out here working at the game of basketball, not playing the game of basketball. So what we have now, we've completed three drills that we think are very, very important to the shooting drills of basketball, and we've also completed 30 free throws with which we will chart. Now that we've completed our three segments of shooting, we think that any basketball player, if he or she is to develop to their fullest potential, they must be able to handle the basketball. And again, it does not matter if you're guard, forward, or center, you must be able to put the ball on the floor and do something with it. And those of us that have played the game, coached the game, or been associated with the game can relate back to the coach telling you, dribble with your weak hand, work with your left hand if you're right-handed, right hand if you're left handed. And the story is always the same. While coach is watching you, you do that. The minute he turns his back or the minute you can relax, you go back to your strong hand. So we feel like in our program, the best drill that any player can do, again, regardless of position, to learn to be the best ball handler he can or she can is to do what we call a two ball dribble. Steve will now start as I tell you the little things that we do. He again works with the same intensity level that he works on shooting. But again, to say that Steve Alford was born able to dribble the basketball like this would not be a true statement. Hours of hard work in his program has helped him develop his dribbling to what we think is the fullest. The two ball dribble strengthens both hands so I can drive either direction, keeping the defense aware that I'm a threat to go either way. Now that we've completed the two ball dribble, we think that the second thing we like for our players to work in the way of ball handling, we just call it very simply dribble the line. And what we like to do is we like to work on sharp corners, planting the foot, pushing off. We tell them to use behind the back, crossover, between the legs, whatever they like to do to change direction with the ball. Now Steve will demonstrate a lap for you here and what we're talking about on dribble the line. Okay, Steve. Come down, plant the foot, up the line, change direction. You can set this up on your court in the backyard, up the line, speed dribble across, back down the line. Dribbling the lines enables me to change both the direction and the pace of my move. So going two laps with the right hand and two laps then with the left hand being their prominent hands, we can follow two ball dribble with four laps here. We think we have a very nice ball handling workout and we're ready to go into our next set of 10 free throws. In shooting my free throws, I dribble the basketball three times. While dribbling, I'm thinking to myself, shoot the ball softly over the front edge of the rim. During Steve's All-American workout, you've noticed that you've not seen a lot of silly shots, wasted shots, but shots that relate to his game. But we do think that basketball should be fun. 
So we tell our players, we're going to give you a two minute or three minute segment now, depending on how long you want your workout to be, where you have fun. This is a time where if you're an elementary student or you're a junior high or high school student, you want to be Steve Alford or Steve if he's your idol or whoever it may be. Maybe it's an inside player in the NBA. Maybe it's a guard in the collegiate level. Whoever you look up to and whatever you want to do with the ball, we tell them now basketball must be fun. You have to have the opportunity to express yourself, to get out just you and the ball. If you want to shoot the last shot that wins the sectional for you, if you want to win the NCAA crown with the last second shot, here's your chance to go out on the floor and have a good time. Now you've got a little time to express yourself where the floor is yours and just have fun with the ball. In Steve's case, he's not one that shoots a lot of hook shots. He's not one that shoots a lot of shots that don't relate to the jump shot. He knows that his bread and butter is found in the jump shot. So this is a situation where he likes to shoot the three-pointer. He likes to work with the dribble, work off the dribble. So he takes his two minutes, and away he goes, just having fun out there. If he wants to, this is for the NBA title, this is for the NCAA title, whatever he can do in his imagination, this is his time to just be Steve Alford and his basketball. And he'll go for two minutes. Again, though, you will notice he doesn't walk. He goes after it with the same intensity level that he does anything in his workout. So in this, he can get another 20 to 25 good shots. He can go here for about two minutes. Where does he go to rest? Back to the free throw line for another set of 10 free throws. And now he's completed four shooting skills. He's completed four sets of free throws with the shooting. He's completed his two dribbling exercises and the set of free throws that goes with the dribbling. So now he's completed five exercises and five sets of 10 free throws. And it's been done in a very short span of time. In 20 minutes, he can get in five offensive sets and he can get in five sets of free throws or a total of 50 free throws. And again, going back to the free throws, everything is always the same. He wants to shoot them while he's out of breath. He wants to shoot them while his legs are heavy. He wants to shoot them the same way, back to that old philosophy of what you do in practice relates to what you do in a game. So he wants to be tired when he shoots his free throws because that's the way he's going to be in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line and he has to go to the foul line to shoot. He was wide open when he turned on that shot. Wade is taking Alford. That's the third Rebel who has been assigned to Alford. He gets caught on one there. They sealed him and that gave Alford enough time. Nobody works without the ball any better than Alford does on those screens. Also, in relating to moving without the basketball, the term physical condition comes into great play. And I think anyone that has watched Steve Alford play the game of basketball, many times in a game, three, four, five different players will guard him because they wear out. But the strange thing about it is Steve stays in the game and doesn't have relief and still moves without the basketball. And I think the workout has been very, very important here in getting him in good physical condition and training him again to go from the practice situation to something he can take into the game situation. So this is what we like to do now in our next segment. He'll go down, set his man up, come back, get the ball, shot. This is also very good for the hands. The first time you try this, you'll have trouble holding the ball in your hands when you get it. And he'll work very hard, feet and hands, feet and hands. They're very important to any player. And to a player of Steve's size, they're extremely important where he'll punish himself. This is very demanding. Again, we go back to that dirty word, intensity level. He works very hard at this. So he'll go his next two minutes setting his man up, jab step, come to the ball, pick it up, take the jump shot. You'll notice he doesn't dribble, but again, he's working very hard. Move, move, constant movement. Now again, we go back to the old statement, how many times have you done this when you work out in the backyard? How many times do we see you doing this in anything that you do? 
in relationship to a workout. And we feel like this has been very, very important to us. In order to get myself free from the defense, I keep constantly moving, which is essential in becoming an effective offensive player. Now Steve will take the opportunity to show you a little bit about what we're talking about when we say attack the man. He'll go right a couple times, take the jump shot, come back out, go left a couple times, doing different things with the ball each time. Whatever he does one time, he tries to do something different the next time. Again, the intensity level with which he plays, with which he moves, always stays 100%. Point moves teaches you to attack with your feet apart, increasing your bounce, and enabling you to attack your opponent in either direction. If you're not a guard, Place a chair in your area to improve your moves and practice changing your attack by moving the chair along the perimeter. Use this drill to attack and beat your opponent. Now I do the broom and chair drill. One thing he likes to do, he just takes one of mom's old brooms puts it on the chair, this gives him something to shoot over. Anything that will distract him, or again, going back to that old saying, trying to relate to what he does in a game situation. So he'll attack now, use the last part of his segment of shooting over the broom, which we try to make think is a man's hand up in your face when you're shooting. Again, something that does not cost money, something that's very simple to do. Now, where'd you go to rest? Back to the free throw line for another set of 10 free throws. Now, what we have with the chairs, we have something that's very inexpensive. We have something that anybody can have access to. We have something that will distract him and make him, again, go back to that word, concentrate more during his workout. And this is one of the things that we really try to stress to players, young and old, is that you must have a good concentration level. That's why when Steve plays, You'll see him get bumped a lot. You'll see him get shoved. You'll see him get pushed, fighting through picks. But you don't see him falling on the ground. You don't see him crying a lot. You don't see him losing his concentration factor that keeps him involved in the ball game. And what do we go back to? What we want to do in our workout on the floor is what we want to do in the game situation. When two people get together, the first thing they want to do, they want to play a game of what we call the old universal one-on-one. -on -one. And it's probably, in most instances, the worst thing that any two people can do that want to improve their basketball game. Because I can tell you, and I'll show you here, I'll have Sean, my youngest son, guard me, and I'll show you the first thing that'll happen, it doesn't matter where you're at, is he'll give you the ball, you'll turn your back to him, You'll back him in to where you want to shoot, take a fallaway shot, a bad shot, and there you go from there. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you think, that's what happens when you play one-on-one. -on -one. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to make some rules that we try to get our players to carry out when they play one-on-one. -on -one. We tell our players that if it doesn't happen quickly, it doesn't happen in a game. So what we try to do now, we tell our players, if you're going to play one-on-one, -on -one, Let's play it our way, which is very simple. The offensive man takes the ball. We try to count. So when he gives him the ball, it's 1,001, 1,002. That will happen in a game situation. That will happen. One dribble, pull up, take the jump shot. 1,001, 1,002, the shot is off. This isn't the way you see one-on-one -on -one played in your backyard. You like to play it the old way. Well, what we're trying to tell you is if you play one-on-one, -on -one, Play it with a time count. I know how you shoot with two people. You shoot one shot, you walk after it, or they throw you the ball back. You walk over here, you shoot another shot, you talk about what time you've got a date tonight, you talk about what time you're going to the swimming pool or the movies, and you're not getting constructive things done. We try to tell our players when they come in our gyms in the summer, 
that we want two people, if there's two of you, we want you working on, again, the game situation. So we tell our players that you can get a lot done, two of you shooting, whether it be backyard, park, gym, it doesn't make any difference. You can learn, first of all, to work very hard without the ball. You can learn second, which I think is very important to the game of basketball, you can learn to communicate. As a coach, many times our toughest job is trying to get our players to communicate with each other while they're playing the game. Back to our old philosophy, what we do out here on the practice floor will carry over to what we do in the game situation. So we tell our players now, if the two of you are going to shoot, and I'll kind of be quiet here and let you listen to them. I may offer a suggestion every now and then. But we try to get them to talk to each other while they're moving. But again, intensity level, concentration, dedication, all those same things. Now you tell me, is this the way, when there's two of you, is this the way you practice basketball? Is this the way two of you shoot? But by the same token, why can't you? Why can't you play it this way? Again, it's habits. Just plain, simple habits. What you learn here in practice is what you carry over to a game situation. Communication on the court is undoubtedly the most important aspect of developing a winning attitude. All the skills previously demonstrated in this workout are meaningless if you don't first learn to communicate with your teammates. Okay, good job, guys. You have to have it in here. You have to have that burning desire, the dedication, the willingness to say, I'm going to dedicate a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour a day to making myself a better basketball player by working at the game of basketball, not playing the game of basketball. Just very simple, communication, hard work. Some coaches say they don't want their guards playing inside. We love for our guards to play inside because their guards are going to be guarding our guards. But again, is this what you see when you and your brother or you and your sister or you and your best friend get together? Is this the way you work at the game? And we can't make you do it. You got to want to ask yourself, how badly, how badly do I want to be the best basketball player I can be? I have seen Steve many times and we have neighbors in Newcastle that said, you know, there's something wrong with that boy. There, there's just something wrong. I look out the window, he may be in the street doing push-ups or running wind sprints because he missed four or five shots in a row and he was disciplining himself. He was disappointed. I should never miss two free throws in a row. And he'd be out there running wind sprints. Well, dad didn't go out there with a whip and make him do it. He wanted to be the best basketball player he could be. And this workout, as I said when we started, is not a magic formula. I wish I had a wand that I could wave above every basketball player's head and say, you're now a great basketball player. Can't do it. This won't make you a great player, but this will make you a better player. If you're a good player, a workout like this could make you a great one. If you're an average player, a workout like this could make you a good player. But it all comes down to the same thing. It's up to you.